Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings for Wednesday, uh, October the 20th. We do have our first big slate of the NBA season. We got 11 games to go over. Um, as always, guys, we're going to go game by game. We're going to you know, talk through each team on the slate, break down each game. I'm going to try and keep this video as you know short as I can. Um, probably try and keep it under 30 minutes if possible. So you know, there'll be games we, we spend more time on than others. There will be games that we just fly through and don't really spend too much time on. But and we'll talk about each game just before we do get started with the breakdown, guys. As always, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button down below. Uh, click the subscribe button as well if you are new here. You guys showed a ton of support on yesterday's video for the opening two-game slate. Um, I saw you know a lot of new faces on the channel. That's something that I love to see. If you are new to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button. Click the notification bell as well so that way you do get notified every time I upload. You also get notified um, every time I do live stream. I will be live streaming once again on Wednesday. Probably sometime, you know, around 5 or 6 o'clock Eastern, I'll go live a couple hours before lock and answer any questions you have, break everything down once again with you guys, talk about any news, starting lineups that comes out throughout the day, uh, basically just break down everything. So be sure to tune into the live stream on Wednesday night, a couple hours before lock. Um, but let's go ahead and, and take a look at Wednesday's big 11-game slate. We're going to start off, talk about the Pacers and Hornets game, and we'll start off on the Pacers side. So for the Pacers here, I'm going to mention the projected starting lineup for every team just so you guys kind of know, you know, heading into this slate, what we can expect. So Pacers projected starting lineup, it's pretty similar to last year. Malcolm Brogdon, Chris Duarte, Jeremy Lamb, DeMontis Sabonis, and Miles Turner. That's the projected starting lineup. Um, obviously, Karis LeVert and TJ Warren would be in there if they were healthy, but both Karis LeVert and TJ Warren are out. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon, though, is expected to play. I know Justin Holiday is questionable. Jeremy Lamb is questionable as well. So, you know, even though it's the beginning of the NBA season, we still have, you know, a ton of news that we're going to have to keep an eye on as the day goes uh, as the day goes on. Uh, but on this Pacers team, I think for me, the only guys I'm probably targeting here, looking at DraftKings pricing, probably, you know, DeMontis Sabonis, I think, at 9,800 is someone you can definitely pay up for. Now, it's 11-game slate. There's a lot of good studs. You got, you know, Jokic on this slate. You got Joel Embiid playing without Ben Simmons. You got Damian Lillard. There's so many guys that, you know, you can pay up for. Sabonis so is definitely towards the top of my list, though. Um, Charlotte, you know, has always been a pretty good matchup for bigs. You know, this Charlotte team is a team you can definitely pick on down low. You know, P.J. Washington, Mason Plumley, like these guys aren't going to stop DeMontis Sabonis. I think Sabonis is for sure my favorite play from the Pacers. I think the rest of these guys are just, you know, tournament options. Like Malcolm Brogdon has upside, but on this slate, there's just so many guys underpriced that... I don't think Brogdon's really someone that stands out. I don't think he's going to be someone I have a ton of exposure to. You know, TJ McConnell's overpriced. Miles Turner is over, like I don't think he projects that well at 5700. Maybe Jeremy Lamb you could go to for value if he's healthy. Jeremy Lamb is projected to start. He's only 3800. If he does wind up starting, I assume he plays at least like mid 20s, close to high 20s in minutes. You know, Jeremy Lamb's kind of always been an up and down guy, but you know he does have some upside, and if he does wind up starting. He's only 3,800. The minutes should be there given TJ Warren's out, given, um, you know, Karis LeVert's out. Justin Holiday could maybe be out as well. But that's probably it. I think Sabonis is clearly the top play from Indiana. And then, you know, the rest of these guys are just like secondary options. But really, it's just, it's Sabonis for me. Um, now, on the Charlotte side, Charlotte's, you know, a pretty similar team to last year. The only big changes they made were, you know, that Mason Plumlee will now be the starting center instead of Cody Zeller. Um, they did pick up Kelly Oubre as well. That's a big addition they got, you know, kind of off the bench. But they got Lamelo, Rozier, Gordon Hayward, P.J. Washington. So very similar starting lineup to what they had last season. You know, looking at this Charlotte team on this slate, nobody really stands out to me except Lamelo. I think Lamelo just, you know, banking on the talent, banking on the upside that he has. It's 7,700. That is probably, you know, cheap enough to where Lamelo is viable on a big slate like this. Again, I think this is going to be a stars and scrubs slate. There's so much value today. There's so many guys that are cheap that are going to be probably playing 30 plus minutes. I don't know if I'm going to be playing a ton of mid-range guys on this slate, but Lamelo's definitely viable. We know Lamelo has triple-double upside. We know he's one of these guys that you know can contribute in all categories, can score, can get rebounds, can get assists, he can get defensive stats too. He's my favorite play from the uh, from the Hornets, but the rest of these guys are just secondary options. You know, not even that. I mean, I don't think I'm going to have too much exposure to anyone on Charlotte except Lamelo. You know, even Co Kelly Oubre feels a little bit cheap at 5600, but he's going to come off the bench most likely. Don't really know how many minutes he gets off the bench or if he even plays enough to be worth rostering at 5,600. So that does it for this game. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, the Bulls and the Pistons. Now, on the Bulls today, 
they made a ton of changes. This is a team that, you know, changed up a lot during the offseason. They got Lonzo Ball. They got DeMar DeRozan. Um, they still got Vucevic, who they traded for last year. But, you know, the big additions were getting Lonzo and getting DeMar DeRozan. I think this is going to be a team that plays really, really fast. You know, last year, the Bulls were a pretty fast-paced team. Um, I think they're going to be a fast-paced team once again this season. I think the Bulls, you know, defensively might not be that great either. Um, so maybe it could be a good matchup for some of these Piston guys. We'll talk about them in a second. But on the Bulls here, you know, just about everyone on Chicago feels appropriately priced. You know, it's going to be hard to predict how the usage goes for this offense. Like, you know, Vooch, Levine, do these guys take a, a usage hit now that DeRozan's on the team? You know, Lonzo's not really a high usage player, but he is a player that, you know, will have the ball in his hands a good amount. I don't know if anyone stands out to me from the Bulls, like as a top play today. You know, there's some guys you could definitely go to in tournaments. Um, if you're playing a lot of lineups, I would for sure be sprinkling in Vooch, Levine, Lonzo, even DeMar DeRozan. But at their price points, I don't think really anyone from Chicago stands out as a core play for me. And the bench guys, like there's no value that I love here. Maybe Alex Caruso could be a value option. I expect he'll be a pretty, you know, cons he'll be a pretty consistent part of this Bulls rotation. I expect him to be someone that consistently gets 20 to 24 minutes on a nightly basis. You know, Caruso can be productive at times. He's fine for 3,500, but I don't think anyone from Chicago stands out as a like core play for me. And on the Pistons side, I mean, there's not too much I like here either. The Pistons are pretty much, you know, close to the same team they were last year. They lost a few guys, but, you know, they have a lot of the same players as last season. Their projected starting lineup is pretty much what it was last year. Killian Hayes, Hamadou Diallo, Sadiq Bey, Jeremy Grant, Isaiah Stewart. You know, the big change is that Mason Plumlee is no longer on the team, so Isaiah Stewart will, you know, most likely be the starting center. Isaiah Stewart at 6,100 is probably my favorite play from Detroit. We saw Isaiah Stewart last season whenever... Whenever he would get minutes, he is someone that can be very productive. Um, he's a guy that can score and rebound. He, he can give you a double-double. He's a great shot blocker as well. And only 6,100 against a Bulls team that probably will play very fast. I think Isaiah Stewart's a decent option. I think he's a fine mid-range play. Um, the rest of these Detroit guys, I don't love. You know, I don't think there's going to be any standout options from Detroit except like Isaiah Stewart. He's probably my favorite play um, from, this, you know, from this Pistons team. Moving on to the next game, though, Boston and the Knicks. So looking at the... Uh, Looking at the Celtics here, you know, the only really change they have, you know, this season was that they picked up Dennis Schroeder, they picked up Josh Richardson as well, and obviously they lost Kimba Walker. Uh, I mean, they, have, they still have Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, um, Robert Williams expected to start at center because Al Horford is not going to play. Al Horford would most likely be the, the starting center if he was healthy, but I think he's on the COVID list or he's out for COVID. Um, but Jason Tatum at 9,400. You know, on this slate, I don't know if Tatum's really going to be like a top stud option for me. The matchup against the Knicks is not great. The Knicks played really, really slow last year. They were one of the slowest paced teams in the league. They were also a really good defensive team. You know, Jason Tatum always has upside, but I don't know if he's like a, a primary stud option for me. I think I'm going to prefer guys like Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, who we'll talk about later. Uh, but Tatum's definitely in play. Jalen Brown at 8,100. He feels appropriately priced. I don't think Brown's going to be like a core option for me at 8,100. And the rest of these Celtics, I'm not in love with. I think Robert Williams at 5,100 is fine. Um, if he winds up starting in place of Al Horford, we know Robert Williams has, you know, big time upside when he gets minutes. He's someone that can put up, you know, 40 DK points in only 22, 24 minutes. He's done it plenty of times last season. You know, I assume that him and Ennis Cantor will probably split the center minutes and you'll probably see, you know, 26 minutes for Williams, maybe 20, 22 for, for Ennis Cantor. At 5,100, I think Robert Williams is um, probably my favorite play overall from Boston, followed by uh, Jason Tatum. You know, Josh Richardson is expected to start, and he's only 3,900, so he could be a viable cheap option if you are looking for a little bit of value. You know, Josh Richardson didn't show much upside last year when he was on Dallas, but on a new offense in a new team, is he, is he's, he's expected to start, probably gets like close to 30 minutes. He's a viable cheap play that you could look to. Um, but that's probably it for, for Boston. There's not too much here that I love. And overall, I don't think this game is going to be one I really load up on just because, you know, right now I would assume, I haven't looked at totals, but I assume this game has like one of the lowest totals on the slate. Uh, but then on the Knicks side, the only big changes they made were adding Kimball Walker, adding Evan Fournay, um, still got RJ Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, uh, Julius Randle, who are all projected to be in the starting lineup, as you would expect. Looking at the Knicks here, looking at their pricing, I think Kimball Walker at 6,700 is someone I do have some interest in. You know, it's a revenge game for him right out of the gate, um, getting to face his old team, getting to face the Celtics. 6,700 for Kimba does feel pretty cheap, especially if we expect him to be, you know, a high usage player. You know, he's going to be playing alongside Julius Randle, who's a high usage player. But like Evan Fournier, RJ Barrett, you know, those guys 
aren't guys that are really going to demand the ball. So I think it's 6,700. Kimba probably gets, you know, 34, 35 minutes. I think he's someone that we could look to for sure. Um, his health has always been an issue, but I would assume his minutes are going to be, you know, normal here. I don't think he's going to be, you know, limited or anything. He's probably my favorite play from the Knicks. I think Julius Randle, uh, you know, a guy that has massive upside, you could always look to in tournaments. Again, on this slate, I think there's going to be other studs I do prefer. But Julius Randle was someone I played a lot last year. He's definitely in play on this slate if you want to go there. The rest of the Knicks, though, like Evan Fournier, RJ Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, you know, feel appropriately priced. Maybe Mitchell Robinson at 5,100, you could look to. You know, Mitchell Robinson's another one of these guys that has upside when he gets minutes. I assume with him starting, he'll probably play like 22 to 24 minutes at least and maybe could see closer to 30 minutes. Again, the matchup against Boston is not ideal. But Mitchell Robinson for 5,100, if he sees anywhere near 30 minutes, you know, is someone that I think is worth rostering. But that probably does it for the Knicks. I think we can go in and talk about the next game, uh, the Wizards and Toronto. So this is one that I have a lot of interest in. There's a lot of good plays here, a lot of viable options on both sides. Starting off with the Wizards, Spencer Dinwiddie, 4,900, expected to start at point guard. I think Spencer Dinwiddie is a really good option below 5K. You know, we haven't seen Spencer Dinwiddie in a long time. Um, he hasn't played in like a year or two. But here, you know, 4,900, the price tag is super, super cheap. Dinwiddie, you know, during the preseason, I think looked pretty good. Like he didn't look, you know, rusty or anything. And Dinwiddie's always been a, you know, relatively productive player when he does get minutes. I think he will be productive in this Wizards offense. I don't think Dinwiddie's going to be a guy that, you know, remains at 4,900 for very long. I think he's probably one of the more underpriced players on this slate. So 4,900 for Spencer Dinwiddie might be my favorite play from the Wizards, but also have some interest in Kyle Kuzma. I think Kyle Kuzma is going to be a lot more productive this year. I think his fantasy upside definitely sees a spike playing on this Wizards team. You know, not having to play alongside LeBron and AD, two guys that just, you know, demand the ball. That's definitely going to be good for Kuzma. He should be able to get more shots up. You know, this Wizards team is probably going to be a very fast-paced team once again this season. 5,100, I definitely have some interest in Kuzma as well. He's another guy that you know played pretty well during the preseason. He showed some you know upside, had a game where he put up 24 points. You know, he, Again, he should get plenty of shot attempts. He should start, play pretty big minutes on a nightly basis for the Wizards. So I like Kuzma a lot. I like Dinwi a lot. I do want to talk about Kuzma over on Price Picks. Uh, right now, they only have him projected for 13 and a half points. I kind of like the over there on Kyle Kuzma's points. Again, we're expecting him to start. We're expecting him to be someone that, you know, consistently gets opportunity in this Wizards offense. He's going to probably take 10 to 15 shots on a nightly basis. He's going to play 30 plus minutes on a nightly basis. And only, you know, 13.5 points. I think he can easily go over that. Um, we don't have a ton of props up on prize picks right now. Um, there's, you know, they still haven't posted like fancy point projections at all yet. I'm recording this video on Tuesday night, but I do like over 13 and a half points for Kyle Kuzma. That's one pick. You can take on Prize Picks, and if you want to check out Prize Picks, you want to sign up over there, uh, guys. They are the sponsor of this video. I would appreciate it if you would check out Prize Picks. Use promo code Noah when you do sign up over there. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100. One pick I like for Prize Picks is obviously over on Kyle Kuzma's points, and then we'll talk about one more that I like as well. That's on the other side of this game. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, Kuzma, Dinwiddie, I think both look like really good options. I think are both a little bit too cheap. You know, Bradley Beal feels appropriately priced at 9500 I don't think he stands out to me on this slate. Daniel Gafford is expected to start at center. I think while Thomas Bryant remains out, Daniel Gafford is someone that's going to have, you know, some good fantasy value, some, some uh, fantasy upside. The only issue with Daniel Gafford is this dude just can't stay out of foul trouble. He seems to always be in foul trouble, but he has shown when he can, you know, stay out of foul trouble, when he can get the minutes, he can be very, very productive. Um, I'm expecting him to probably play... 24 to 26 minutes. You'll probably see Montrez Harrell get you know minutes as the backup center. Um, while Thomas Bryant is out, though, Daniel Gafford should be the starting center for the Wizards. He's only 4,900. They just signed him to like a big, big contract ex extension. So clearly they are invested in Daniel Gafford right now. I do like him as a value at 4,900 too. Um, this Wizards team definitely gives us some value. Um, Kuzma, Dinwiddie, Gafford. I like all those guys a good amount, but that's probably it for this Wizards team, at least for me. Now on the Toronto side, Toronto is another team that uh, there's a lot of good plays from Toronto. There's a lot of value on this team. Starting off with Fred Van Vliet, I think he's one of the better options in the mid-range today. Kyle Lowry, obviously no longer on the team. Pascal Siakam, not going to be available to start the season. So without Siakam, with Lowry no longer on the team, I mean, Fred Van Vliet should get a ton of usage, should have the ball in his hands a ton. We see Van Vliet be very productive in these scenarios whenever, you know, Siakam's out, whenever Lowry's out, and obviously Lowry's not on the team anymore. 
7,500 is too cheap for Van Vliet and a great matchup against the Wizards in a you know pretty what should be a pretty fast-paced game. Um, I love Van Vliet in the mid-range. I think he's a very strong option. I think there's some good value from uh, from the uh, Raptors as well. Right now, they do have Scotty Barnes in the projected starting lineup. Scotty Barnes, rookie um, out of Florida State. I like St Scotty Barnes a good amount for value, assuming he's starting. I mean, he's only 3,400. If he is starting, he probably does see closer to you know 25 to 28 minutes, maybe even more. With Siakam out, I think Scotty Barnes is going to be the guy that benefits in terms of minutes. Now, when Siakam comes back, obviously, Scotty, Scotty Barnes probably will go back to the bench. But for 3,400, starting and probably playing mid-20s minutes, closer to high-20s minutes, I think Scotty Barnes is a really, really good value. He's my second favorite play from Toronto today. And then some other guys you could look to in tournaments, like Gordon Dragic, if he starts, only 5K. He's on the Raptors now. I think Gordon Dragic, you know, even though he's going to play alongside Van Vliet, should still be relatively productive. Dragic has always been a relatively productive player when he's on the floor. He's been a guy that you know normally can average around a fantasy point per minute. He's only 5K. Um, you know Malachi Flynn coming off the bench, 6K probably won't go there. Precious Achua uh, should get some backup center minutes. Should get some you know opportunity. He's only 3100. He looked really good during the preseason. He's another one of these guys that can be very productive when he gets minutes. You know how many minutes will he play on a nightly basis for this Raptors team? We we don't really know. That's kind of the guess. Uh, but I think for 3,100, he's someone you could take a shot on too. But really for me, Van Vliet, Scotty Barnes, you know, assuming Scotty Barnes starts, those are the two, my two favorite plays from Toronto. And then I think, you know, Dragic makes some sense. Chris Boucher, maybe you could go to at 6,500. Um, but really Van Vliet and, and Barnes are the two guys I, I like most from Toronto. Uh, the next game, we're going to talk about Cleveland and Memphis, looking at the Cleveland side. Before we do uh, get to this game, guys, I do want to hop back over to prize picks. Forgot to talk about this. So, Right now, Price Picks only has Fred Van Vliet projected for six and a half assists. That is another prop I like going over on. You know, we talked about how Kyle Lowry is no longer on the team. Pascal Siakam is out as well. That's going to increase the usage rate for Fred Van Vliet. He's going to probably be the primary ball handler, even though he will be playing alongside Gordon Dragic some. I still expect Van Vliet to have the ball in his hands a lot. I think his assist numbers will be, you know, he'll be able to average more than, you know, six and a half assists per game. I think with, you know, Lowry not on the team, with Siakam out, we can easily get seven assists here from Fred Van Vliet, especially in a fast-paced game against the Wizards. So I do like over set, uh, six and a half assists for Fred Van Vliet on prize picks to go along with over 13 and a half points for Kyle Kuzma. You can take those two picks, pair them together, uh, easily tr or easily double up your money if you do a flex play, if you go two for two, or triple up your money if you do a power play. It's a parlay fa uh, format. You would have to get both picks right if you do that, but you can triple up your money easily on prize picks just getting those two picks right. Again, guys, if you want to check out Price Picks, they're the sponsor of this video. Check them out. Link down below in the description, or just use promo code Noah. When you do sign up for Price Picks, you will get your first deposit matched um, up to $100. But yeah, let's talk about Cleveland and Memphis now. Starting off on the Cleveland side, I don't see too much I really like here. I think Evan Mobley, um, rookie for Cleveland, um, guy they drafted in the first round, 4,500. He's expected to start. You know how productive is he going to be? You know for this Cavs team, we don't really know. Kevin Love's expected to come off the bench. I I think that's kind of surprising. I would assume Kevin Love would start, but the projected starting lineup I'm looking at has Evan Mobley in there. Um, Evan Mobley, only 4,500. If he does wind up starting, I think he could be a guy that we do look to for value. I don't see too much I love, though, from the Cavs today. Like, I don't think the Cavs are going to be a team I roster much of this season. Like, Colin Sexton, A300, feels appropriately priced. Same with Darius Garland. Same with Jared Allen at 6,500. But if Mobley starts for 4,500, he could maybe be someone worth considering for for value on the Memphis side. John Morant, I'm pretty high on this season. I think John Morant's going to have a breakout year, but 9,100, man, that is, ooh, that's very expensive for John Morant. I think his price is high enough to where I don't know if I'm going to be playing a ton of him on this slate. I don't know if I'm going to be getting a ton of exposure to really anyone on Memphis. I will say that D'Anthony Melton is super cheap and he's expected to start. He's only 3,600. We've seen D'Anthony Melton be relatively productive when he does get minutes. So, if he winds up in the starting lineup, I think D'Anthony Melton is someone we could consider for value. Um, only 3,600. Grayson Allen no longer on the team, so maybe Melton's the guy that you know kind of replaces him in the starting lineup. At least that's what they expected to be. Um, Desmond Baines expected to start as well and instead of Kyle Anderson. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but Desmond Baines, super cheap, 3,200. If he starts, he could be a value play worth considering, but overall this game I don't have too much interest in you know starting lineups are going to be very important um they're you know they're always super important early on in the season just because there is a little bit more uncertainty 
with starting lineups than you know pre- than before, just because it's the beginning of the year. You know, teams have new players. We don't really know what the rotations are gonna like. We don't really know what the starting lineups are gonna look like. Um, starting lineups will be very important. We'll have to keep an eye on those. If the starting lineup is what I expect it to be, Morant, Melton, Bain, Jackson, Adams. I think Melton's a solid value at 3,600. The rest of the Memphis guys, though, feel about you know priced correctly. You know, maybe Stephen Adams at 4,700, but I don't see too much here that I, that I love from Memphis. Um, so we can go ahead and move on to the next game, Houston and Minnesota. This is one that I think should be very high scoring. These are two teams that played at a really, really fast pace last year. Starting off on the Houston side, you know, I think Christian Wood at 8K, definitely a good option. Christian Wood always has been very, very productive when he gets minutes. He should once again, you know, be a high usage player on this Rockets team, especially with John Wall, you know, not playing right now. Only 8K, that does feel a little bit too cheap for Christian Wood, especially in a good matchup against Minnesota, against a Minnesota team that should be, you know, very fast paced. Both these teams, I think, are going to play fast this year. I definitely have interest in Christian Wood. I think Kevin Porter Jr., He's expensive at 7,800, but I think he's another guy that's kind of poised for a breakout year. You know, should should be heading into the season fully healthy. Should be heading into the season able to play you know big minutes on a nightly basis. And he's going to be the point guard with you know John Wall not playing. So Kevin Porter Jr. Um, and Christian Wood, I think both look like good options in the mid range. And then we do get some value from this uh, Rockets team. Jalen Green, the rookie that they drafted in the first round, he's only 4,200 and he's expected to start. I think he's probably one of the better value plays on this slate. You know, I don't know why, but DraftKings, when it comes to these rookies, like they just don't price them up. Like all the rookies are cheap. Scotty Barnes is cheap. Jalen Green's cheap. Uh, we're going to talk about Josh Giddy. He's cheap. Like all these first round draft pick rookies that are expected to start and play big minutes, like they're all super cheap. So there's good value here. I think Jalen Green at 4,200 is going to start, probably play 30 plus minutes. He's definitely a good play and definitely one of the you know, better values, I would say, on this slate. There's a lot of good value, but I think Green's a good option too. So Kevin Porter, Jalen Green, Christian Wood, I think are my primary interests um, from the Rockets. Now on the Minnesota side, Minnesota's another team, I think. There's some decent plays here. Now there's not much value for Minnesota, but we do have some good payup options. I think Carl Anthony Towns, one of the better stud options on this slate. Now the big question you're going to have to ask yourself between Jokic and B Towns, like which one are you going to pay up for? Obviously, you can't play all three of those guys. You can only play a max of two. I think all three look like really good payup options. I think Towns is another guy that's kind of poised for a breakout year. We know Towns, you know, has massive upside. We know he's going to play pretty big minutes on a nightly basis. The matchup is great against Houston. Again, this should be a very fast-paced game. I think Towns probably comes in a little bit lower owned than some other studs we're going to talk about, like Jokic, like Embiid. Uh, so that does make me like Towns a good amount in tournaments. D'Angelo Russell, I think, is appropriately priced to 8500 if not a little bit too expensive. I think Anthony Edwards at 7100 looks like a really good option. I know he had a really good preseason. He's another guy that's kind of poised for a breakout year. Um, he obviously showed a lot of upside last season. Was a guy that played big minutes on a nightly basis. I think we can expect that probably once again this season. So for only 7100 I do like Anthony Edwards a good amount um, in the mid-range. I think him and Towns are my two favorite plays from Minnesota. The rest of this team... There's not too much else that stands out. Like Jaden McDaniels expect a start, but he's kind of a low usage player. Same with Josh Okogi. Doubt I go to those guys, even though they are starting. Um, I think we can go ahead and move on to the next one. Talk about uh, let's talk about the Sixers and the Pelicans. This is another game that looks really, really good. There's a lot of good options on both sides here. You got some value from this game. You got some stud plays as well. Starting off at the top with Joel Embiid. I think Joel Embiid is probably. Probably my favorite stud overall on the slate. I think he's the guy I have the most interest in. We already know that Ben Simmons is going to be out for this game. Without Ben Simmons, you expect the usage to be dominated by Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris like it has been for you know, previous seasons. Whenever Simmons is out, you know, Harris and Embiid are the two biggest beneficiaries. When Embiid's out, Harris, Simmons, it's just, you guys know. I mean, you've been playing DFS long enough, I'm sure. So without Simmons, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid both get a big bump. I think Joel Embiid, you know, massive upside. We know what Embiid can do when he's on the floor. We know he's going to be super productive when he's on the floor. He can give you 35, 40 points, 10, 15 rebounds. He can block shots. Like He's got 60 plus point upside. He's probably my favorite stud overall on the slate, and I like to match up a lot against New Orleans. I think New Orleans should once again be a a pretty fast-paced team this year, even though they don't have Lonzo anymore. You know, they should still probably be one of the faster paced teams in the league. So uh, lots of like from the Sixers. Embiid, obviously a top option. I think Tobias Harris, Solid mid-range play. Again, there's a lot of good mid-range plays. Like you have Fred Van Vliet at 7,500 versus Tobias Harris at 7,600. I think I'd rather play Van Vliet in that scenario. But without Ben Simmons, I think Tobias Harris does benefit. You know, Seth Curry benefits without Simmons, but he's also appropriately priced at 5,800. 
Um, the one guy I do want to talk about from the Sixers is Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey is expected to start in place of Ben Simmons, and he is only 4K. He is super, super cheap. We already know Ben Simmons is out, and Shake Milton is out as well, which is big. Um, there should be big minutes available for Tyrese Maxey. We saw last season, whenever Maxey got opportunity to play, whenever he got minutes, he was always productive. He's a guy that you know can score, he can grab rebounds, he can get assists. He's just he's a fantasy point per minute player, and he's probably in line to play 30 plus minutes here with Ben Simmons out at only 4K. Maxi is probably the best value overall on the slate. And as you can tell by the thumbnail, you know, I have a lot of interest in Maxi today. Um, so love Tyrese Maxi, love Joel Embiid. Tobias Harris, I think, is a good play too. That's probably it for the Sixers, though. I don't see too much else I love. It's a big slate. I don't think I'm gonna, gonna be going to guys like you know Danny Green or or Seth Curry again. I think Curry's a little bit overpriced. Court Moss, that like I'm not gonna play these guys on an 11 game slate. So we can move on to the other side, talk about the Pelicans. On the Pelicans, we do know the Zion, you know, not fully healthy yet, so he is going to be out for the Pelicans. With Zion out, you know, I expect Brandon Ingram to see a big bump in usage. I think it's 7,700. Brandon Ingram is another very strong option in the mid-range. I think Nikhil Alexander-Walker is also a very strong option in the mid-range. Uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker is also one of these guys that is primed for a breakout year. With Lonzo no longer on the team, you know, NAW should be primed for big minutes on a nightly basis. He's a really good scorer. He's a guy that can just do a little bit of everything when he's on the floor. He's another one of these guys that is going to be really productive when he gets minutes, and we saw that last season. I like him a lot at 6,600. He's probably my favorite play overall from the Pelicans, followed by Brandon Ingram. You know, Joe Val, I'm a big fan of, but this is a tough, tough matchup against Embiid. I don't think I'm going to play too much Joe Val on this slate. Um, it's just, I don't think he's going to make my player pull. The matchup does scare me a bit, but Joe Val. You know, he's one of those guys that when he's on the floor, he's going to be very productive. Um, again, the matchup scares me, though. Najee Marshall feels priced about right. Same with Devontae Graham. Don't think I'm going to anyone on the bench. So really, Brandon Ingram and, uh, and NAW are the two guys I like most from the Pelicans. But now let's go ahead and move on to the next game. Talk about Orlando and San Antonio. So on Orlando, for me, this is a pretty easy team to cover. I think Jalen Suggs at 4K, assuming he starts. Again, another rookie projected to start and play big minutes is only 4k um so i think jalen suggs looks like a really really good value i expect him to be pretty productive on a nightly basis in this magic offense i expect him to be a guy that you know gets a good amount of usage gets a good amount of opportunity he's my favorite play from orlando i think mo bamba is someone you can look to assuming that he starts right now the projected starting lineup has mo bamba and wendell carter jr in it i'm not sure if those guys are actually going to start alongside each other we'll have to see but if Mo Bamba does wind up starting, I mean, we saw last season towards the end of the year when Mo Bamba was starting and playing 30 minutes on a nightly basis. I mean, he was putting up 50, 40 point games on a nightly basis. Like Mo Bamba is a really, really productive player when he gets minutes and he would definitely be underpriced at 5,700 if we can expect him to start and play anywhere near 30 minutes. Um, he would be my second favorite play followed by Jalen Suggs. But that's probably it for Orlando. There's not too much else that stands out for you know, in terms of price point. Um, again, guys, I'm just trying to go through this quick as possible. Just I'm trying not to keep you for too long. Uh, then on the Spurs side, for me, from the Spurs, I think Deontay Murray, um, 6,800 is my favorite play by far. Without DeMar DeRozan, you know, with him no longer on the team, I mean, this is DeMar, this is Deontay Murray's team. He's going to get a ton of usage in this offense. He's going to get a ton of opportunity. He's going to have the ball in his hands a ton. We know Deontay Murray has massive upside. He's one of these guys that, you know, can do everything, can score, can get rebounds, can get assists. He's a good defender. He can get defensive stats. He's only 6,800. He's a really, really good mid-range option. He's my favorite play from San Antonio. The rest, I don't like. I don't know. Maybe Keldon Johnson at 5,100 is fine without DeRozan. I think Keldon Johnson's primed for a better year this year. But there's so many other cheap guys that I probably would just rather go to those guys we've talked about, those 4K, 3K values. Um, really, Deontay Murray is the one guy I really like from San Antonio. Um, but last three games, we have OKC and Utah on the OKC side. For me, I think Josh Giddy is probably the one play that I have the most interest in here. Only 3,800. He is he is expected to start for the Thunder. At least he's in the projected starting lineup. Another rookie that is just super cheap and that is expected to start and play pretty big minutes. Don't really know why he's only 3,800. You know, you throw him into your value pool. There's about 35, 40 guys you could literally play today for value. And I think Giddy's obviously one of the top options. I would say for me, like Maxi, probably Maxi. Jalen Green, Jalen Suggs, Scotty Barnes, Giddy. Like, I think these guys are some of the better values, like below 4K. And I'm sure there's some other ones I've skipped over too. But those guys stand out for me for value. Um, I expect Giddy to be relatively productive when he's on the floor. And he should be primed for, you know, relatively big minutes for a rebuilding Thunder team that, you know, probably will be pretty bad once again this season. 
SGA, you know, should get a ton of usage. I'm a bit worried about blowout here. Like, the the, the Thunder could just get, get the shit beat out of him in this game, and, and SGA only plays three quarters. But, you know, SGA is going to be this entire offense. He's going to get a ton of opportunity. The matchup's not great. It's a slow-paced game. But I think SGA is a fine mid-range option. I'd rather play, like, a Van Vliet over him. But, you know, Shea Gillis-Alexander is definitely in play. Um, Giddy, though, is my favorite play from the Thunder, followed by SGA, and that's that's probably it. Now, on the Utah side... I don't like much from Utah. Like, they feel like everyone on Utah feels appropriately priced. They're coming into the season fully healthy. They didn't really make any changes over the offseason. They're still going with the same starting lineup from last year. They still have a lot of the same bench guys. I don't see much from the Jazz. You know, obviously, Donovan Mitchell has big time upside, but he's 9,600. Like, I'd rather play Embiid. I'd rather play Jokic. I'd rather play Towns. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to Mitchell on this slate when there's just so many other studs I prefer. Um, so don't see much from Utah that I really like. Um, so last two games, last two 10 o'clock games, we'll go over real quick, guys. Starting off on Denver, looking at Denver and Phoenix here. On Denver, for me, it's Nikola Jokic by far. I think Jokic is one of the better payup options right up there with Joel Embiid. Um, Jokic, we know what he's going to do when he's on the floor, man. Jokic is a stat, stat sheet stuffer. He's going to play relatively big minutes on a nightly basis. Even though this should be somewhat of a slow-paced game, Jokic can still go out there and put up 35 points, 15 rebounds, you know, 14 assists. He's going to get all all the opportunity. He's going to get all the usage. He you know dominates the usage in this offense. Jamal Murray is still out, which I think does benefit Jokic a decent amount. You know, Definitely helps his usage, uh, usage rate a little bit, helps his assist percentage as well. Uh, so I think Jokic is a top stud. The rest of these Denver guys, like Will Barton for 5,200, Monte Morris for 5K, I think they're fine. I think Monte Morris at 5K would be a good play on a different slate. On this slate, I don't think Monte Morris is going to really stand out as a top option. You know, Michael Porter Jr. has upside. Assuming that he plays, I think he's expected to play. Um, he sh- he sat out their preseason game, but he should be good for this one. You know, MPJ, without Jamal Murray, he obviously has plenty of upside. Um, you know, he's going to be the second guy in terms of scoring. I think MPJ is a fine mid-range option, but there's probably some other guys I'd rather go to. Again, I think this is going to be a stars and scrubs slate, so I don't know how much I'm going to be rostering from the mid-range, but I do think MPJ is viable. Um, Jokic, though, is the clear, like, priority from from the Nuggets. And then on the Phoenix side, you know, Phoenix is another team kind of like Utah. They didn't really make too many changes. They're going with the same, they got the same starters as last year. Um, the pricing for Phoenix looks pretty accurate. Like nobody on the Sun stands out as just too cheap. Maybe Chris Paul is 7,600, but there's so many other guys that are underpriced that I probably would rather play. Um, I don't see much I like from Phoenix. I think my main interest in, in this game is on the Denver side with guys like Jokic and, and MPJ. Um, last game though, Kings and Blazers. This is one that should See a lot of points scored. These are two pretty fast-paced teams as well. On the Kings side, you know they're another team that doesn't didn't change much over the offseason. They still got Fox, Halliburton, Barnes, Harkless, and Holmes as their projected starting lineup. The price tags on all these guys do feel about right. Um, Darren Fox obviously has a lot of upside. He's 9,300 though. He is pretty expensive. I don't know if Fox is going to be like a top stud for me, but I think he's someone that I will have in my player pool. Uh, but I probably would prefer Jokic and Bead. Cat, um, even, you know, like I think Tatum I might take over Fox. That's a close one for me. Um, but I think Fox is definitely viable. The rest of the Sacramento guys, like they all feel priced about right. I think Rashawn Holmes, if we can expect him to start and play around 30 minutes, Rashawn Holmes is a very productive player when he gets minutes. At only 6,300, you could go there. I think he's a, a fine option, but not too much I love from Sacramento outside of De'Aaron Fox. Now on the Portland side, looking at the Blazers here, you know, Damian Lillard on this slate, I don't know if he's going to be someone I jam in, but I think Lillard is a, a good stud option. Obviously, Lillard has big time upside. He is, I would say, a little bit overpriced, though. You know, this 10,100 price point is probably something we would have saw like in the playoffs last year. I don't know if we can expect the type of production that we saw from the playoffs to transition into the beginning of the regular season, but Lillard still has a lot of upside. He's still a good play. It's a good matchup against Sacramento. Obviously, Damian Lillard is someone you could look to. CJ McCollum, is fine. You know, I rarely play CJ McCollum when Lillard's healthy, when Nurkic is healthy, um, but it's a good matchup. It's a fast-paced game. You know, it wouldn't be surprising to see McCollum do well here, but I don't think he stands out. I think Nurkic is a good play at 7K. Nurkic is someone that I played a lot last year. I'm a big Nurkic fan. He's someone that just has a lot of upside. I think the minutes should be there for Nurkic this year. I think he's going to be a guy that gets consistently probably 30-plus minutes on a nightly basis, and we've seen Nurkic go out there and just, you know, break slates, put up 50 plus DraftKings points. Great matchup against Sacramento. Really like Lillard. Really like Nurkic. 
that's probably it though from the Blazers. Like I don't see too much else I like here. I don't think I'm playing like any of the bench guys. Um, so that does it, man. I know 11 game slate. We probably talked for a long ass time. This video is already yeah 34 34 minutes long. But it is what it is, man. Um, It's 11 games. It's a lot to break down. I appreciate you guys sticking with me, though. I appreciate you watching the video. If you stuck through the whole video, man, appreciate you as well. Um, I know it was a long video, but I wanted to try and give you guys as much information as possible, give you kind of my full thoughts on this slate, and break everything down from each game, break down each team. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. And also, check out Price Picks, guys. I forgot to mention that. Um, lastly, you know, real quick, Check out Price Picks, the sponsor of this video. If you have not signed up for Price Picks yet and you would like to, be sure to use promo code NOAH when you sign up for Price Picks. You'll get your first deposit matched up to $100. And we did talk about some picks I like for Price Picks today. Just a few over on 13.5 projected points for Kyle Kuzma, over on 6.5 assists projected for Van, uh, Fred Van Vliet. Those are two picks you can take that I like for Price Picks. And if you want to check out their entire board for this Wednesday night slate, you can do that. You can see everything that I have to offer and you can make some picks for yourself. Just make sure that you use promo code NOAH when you do sign up there so that way you do get that deposit bonus. But best of luck on this slate, guys. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to tune into the live stream Wednesday night. I'll be live around 5 or 6, uh, 6 Eastern breaking down the slate once again with you guys and answering any questions you have. But good luck and thanks for watching, guys.